Hey, welcome to Airman Vision. Today, I will be sharing my experience with taking the D-Lab. D-Lab is not testing you on your knowledge of other languages. So it's not a little bit of Spanish and a little bit of French, a little bit of Russian. It's actually a made up language. So it's English sounds and letters just not in the way we know it so it sounds like mumbling. The overall purpose of the D-Lab is to test someone's ability to learn a foreign language. And there are two parts to the D-Lab. There is an audio section and a visual section. I also made some visual aids to help give you a layout of what you can expect, but the examples I used are not what you will see on the test. They're just things that I came up with to help give you an idea of what it would be like. I just finished taking the D-Lab. That was a very interesting test. I don't know my score yet. I did not study for the D-Lab. We'll find out my score in a little bit. So the very first thing you do, it's made up of, I think like five sections. The first section is just a few questions about yourself, your experience with foreign language, whether it be no experience at all, or some experience, like maybe you have had some experience in high school, but you're not fluent in speaking it. They give you like four or five options to choose from on there. Also, how much schooling you've had, like if you're a high school graduate or if you've had some college or if you have a college degree, and also how interested you would be in wanting to learn a foreign language. So that is the first section. And the next section, is the stress syllable section. On all of these, it is an audio test. So you'll have headphones on and on the screen, it will say A, B, C, D, but beside A, B, C, D, it is just blank. When you hit play audio, it will say A, B, C, D, literally this is what it's what it sounds like. <laughs> you are choosing which one where the stress syllable wasn't similar to the others. I just went in and took it because my recruiter needed somebody to take it and I was qualified to take it. So he said, will you go take it? And I did. I have probably bombed it. I just, my mind, like I'm talking so slow. I feel like just because like my mind hasn't like regrouped <laughs> after taking that test. It took Spanish in high school but not enough to be able to speak it fluently. Section three, they give you rules to words and sentences. So it could be something like the noun will come before the adjective and all nouns will end in a and all adjectives will end in e, like the i sound, like e. So then they will like give you a little phrase and then sometimes it's like oh that will be the way it is or sometimes you have to flip it and then you have to know like which one is the noun and the noun's gonna end in a so you have to listen for that There's another one where it gives you more rules and it could be like sister of the bride, but the words of and the and a and an like don't exist in this language. So then you like take those out, but then they will give you rules of other things um, like that ends with or it starts with or it has to be in like the word and then it just goes on and adds more rules to different things like for example it might be adjective ends in buh so it could be jump buh kick buh you'll have a few different sections where you will only have like a few rules at a time of like examples that i just gave you guys but then you'll get to the end of the section where it applies all of the rules and you have to answer like 30 questions or something. I actually ran out of time because these are timed. Actually it was 20 questions 
and I was at like 18 of 20 and I ran out of time. Cause you also can't select the answer before all of them are read. So for example, if it said A, da 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 da. And then I was like, oh, that was it. And I click A, I can't hit next until A through D have been read and you've heard all of them, I guessed. I mean, I still kind of listened and tried, but I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is way too much to remember and apply and listen to and understand. <laughs> so a thing that is good is they will give you the rules, but the rules will be on the page. Like they're not shown, but you can hit rules. It'll say A, B, C, D rules, and you can hit rules and it'll show you all the rules that you can like look over before you hit play audio because once you hit play audio you can only listen to the audio one time you can't like listen to it once and then listen to it again and then listen to it again and try to figure it out once you hit play audio that's it a b c d and then you have to make your choice but a tip is to hit rules so it pops up on the screen and then with the ones that you can kind of figure out then apply those for example if you know, it says jump and you're like, okay, jump is gonna end in buh. And you're like, jump buh. And gym is gonna end in E. So you're listening for like jump buh, gym E. It's weird. I know this is not making any sense. I know I bombed the very last section. There were 30 questions and there were four pictures at the top. And then it said, you know, some little letters or words or phrases underneath, but it was not anything that is like a known word, for example. It's not like it was a picture of a frog and it was like jumpy or frog. It was a picture of a frog and it would be like E-E-O. And then like there would be four pictures at the top with like the letters or words or phrases that were like made up just random letters together and I'm like what is happening right now and then there would be three pictures on the side but then like each picture would have like a question basically you were supposed to like decipher a sentence that best fit the picture but it none of it made sense because even like there would be the pictures at the top and there'd be pictures at the side and like you're supposed to like relate them to the pictures at the top and like figure out the sentence but then the pictures on the side didn't even like relate to the pictures at the top and I'm like what is happening like at the top there could be a picture of like a coin a building and a man and a duck and then like the picture I'm answering the question about is like two bags. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm just like, click, 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 send, next, doom, I'm done. And I was just doing like the simple rules applying, like it would have two rules and I would apply it to the sentence or the phrase or whatever. I was. During that part, I'm like, okay, okay, you know, this isn't that bad. I could probably do this, like, at least, like, learn these. But then when I had to put, like, all 10 rules with, like, one sentence, I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm. And then when the pictures and the random letters, I'm like, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I don't want to do this. No. You guys, that was the D-Lab probably the worst explanation ever but I just I don't even know so I thought I absolutely bombed the D lab I had no clue I was thinking maybe I got a 50 possibly a 60 but I just didn't know I had texted my recruiter right when I was done and about an hour on my way home I got a text from my recruiter that said um you almost passed I was not expecting that at all. So I was like, okay, what did I get? I got a 102 on my D-Lab and you need a 110 to pass the D-Lab in the Air Force. So with that being said, I am glad that I did not pass because linguist was not a job I had on my list, but I was qualified to take it. So my recruiter asked me if I would take it and I said yes. 
but it also was really cool to know that I scored way higher than I was expecting to. And I know this video was pretty confusing, but that is literally how the D-Lab is, but I hope that you still get a little bit more of an understanding of what to expect on the D-Lab, and I wish all of you the best of luck.